And for for the reasons for that six to twenty rep range, what would you kind of want to cover? Kind of why it might not be the best idea to go much below six reps, and why you know it might not also be a great idea to go much above twenty reps all the time. I mean, of course, you can do a little bit below that and a little bit above it. They're not hard lines for everybody, but why might it be a generally good idea for to stick in that rep range? Great question. So. The, the, the big question that everyone's trying to answer as of late is how do we count volume? Um, because how you count volume from the perspective of uh, stimulating strength, stimulating hypertrophy, and generating fatigue are all slightly different answers. So if you were to compare someone doing uh, three by two to four, like a two to four max on a lift, versus someone doing three by eight to 12, you would get two different outcomes. The person but doing three by two to four would get stronger than the person on a one RM than the person doing three by eight to 12. Even though if you looked at the tonnage, three by eight to 12 is a lot more. So we know intensity or the load on the bar specificity is more important for strength. Uh, but doing adequate amount of work is more important for hypertrophy. Um, so at a certain point though, you can start comparing sets to sets. Like we also have a study showing that three by 25 to 35 produces the same hypertrophy as three by eight to 12. So at what point does a set get on equal footing to any other set? And is there a point where there's a drop off? That's the question. So right now, I think the best speculation we have is that if you're doing like at least six reps, uh, probably up to like, you know, 20, 30 reps, any given set, if it's an adequate effort, it should have a pretty similar, similar stimulus for hypertrophy. Uh, now, why is that? Someone might be like, what the heck, you know, you do 20 reps, that's going to be damn near three times the volume of a set of six. Right. Well, because your body doesn't count tonnage, you know, your body thinks about how much time under what level of tension. So if you do six reps, you're already going to be around like 85% of 1RM. It's going to be slow from the get-go. And on the very first rep, you're going to be recruiting pretty much everything and placing it under a high tension stimulus. And it's going to last long enough that you're putting adequate fatigue uh, from that tension stimulus into almost all your muscle fibers, right? The same thing occurs when you take a set of 20 damn near to failure. It's just that the first 10, 15 reps are accumulating fatigue, generating metabolic byproducts, and making it so that you have to cycle in those high threshold motor units that would normally be present on a heavy lift because now everything else is done. Uh, so then you end up getting the same effect. You know, the reps are moving faster, faster, faster until they slow down, while on a set of six, it's slow from the get go and you just run out of gas. So for that reason, kind of any moderately heavy up to moderately lightweight can be effective for hypertrophy, given that the adequate effort is there. But at a certain point, you can go too light. There was a study just recently published showing that even when you do do a similar number of sets, if you're training at like 20% of 1RM, which is some stupid number like your 50 rep max, um, that that actually doesn't produce the same amount of hypertrophy as training anywhere between 40 to 80 percent of 1RM. So you can use light loads, you just can't use like a pencil, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so that that's the basic answer. Now, when you use which rep ranges, that that's another question. I think it comes down to logistics and practicality. Um, if you were to decide to use that 40 percent of 1RM number on squats. The rest of your leg workout is going to be absolute trash because you're going to do a set of 30 damn near to failure um, if you want to get a, a similar stimulus to six. So the, the global fatigue, the metabolic fatigue, because you have a bar on your back so almost the whole, whole body is active, is going to be logistically unsound and probably not a good idea uh, if you want to be able to get in leg extension, leg curl, leg press or whatever else in that workout. So it probably makes more sense for those heavy full body uh, compound or those full body compound, you know, especially dangerous lifts to be more in the moderate rep range, say 10 or lower. Uh, and then when you start getting to things like a lap pull down or a row, and then even more so if you're doing like a calf raise or a curl, you can feel free to use uh, much higher reps. And at a certain point, now that I'm you know 35, I notice that like if I do sets of six to eight on curls, my elbows get, get, get pissed off with me. So I'd much rather do sets of 20 or 25 or 15 or something like that. Uh, so I, I tend to match up different rep ranges of different movements that tend to agree with me, knowing that they all are more or less kind of equal from a hypertrophy perspective if the effort is there, uh, which it makes it a lot easier to program um, and is a much more easy logical system to, to enact. 
so that that's kind of my broad answer to that. But you do want some variation. You do want to try to progress. And sometimes it's actually easier to add reps. Like if you think about it, um, if you have to add one rep with your say six rep max load, you're going from six to seven, that's a greater increase than if you're, that's, that's a one sixth increase, right? But if you're trying to go from say your 15 rep max to 16, that's only a one fifteenth increase. So it's easier to add a rep in a higher rep range. So you can eke out smaller little bits of progressive overload. And uh, shout out to Brian Miner. He kind of pointed that out and had a good article about it on Myo Journal. Um, so I have found that, yeah, a good way to break a plateau might be shifting my rep ranges up and not focusing on increasing load, but just increasing uh, the number of reps I can do at a given uh, weight. So I think if you know that and you know the various strategies and you know that any rep range kind of within six to 30 can work, it gives you more options and more ways to find progress and to prevent mental burnout too. And that was the man, Eric Helms, on what rep range you should work in. And just to kind of summarize this a little bit, work in much below six reps and you're gonna get a disproportionate amount of fatigue for the amount of volume or for the stimulus you're getting because a set of, you know, three or four, it's still gonna be really fatiguing or pretty fatiguing on a per set basis but you're not gonna get a ton of volume. And if your goal is bodybuilding and building muscle, we, we're pretty sure that volume is one of the leading drivers of that. And if we're sacrificing intensity for volume, it's probably not a good idea. So we're not getting much stimulus on a per set basis for those sets below about you know five or six. So that's probably why you probably wouldn't wanna go below that much. And going much above like 20 or 30 reps, then you can potentially run into more metabolic fatigue you're you're winded by halfway through the set or maybe you're holding the front rack position on a front squat and your collarbone and your wrist hurt before you actually run into muscular fatigue and it's harder to tell how close you are from failure on those higher rep sets you know if you're doing a set of like 15 on squats i feel like you can almost always do one more rep and you might think it was an rpe nine or you had one rep in the tank and then you just keep telling yourself well, one more rep and then six reps later you're like okay now i'm actually pretty close to failure so going much above those rep ranges above 20 to 30 reps probably also isn't a great idea for a lot of those reasons and it also has to be heavy enough like eric mentions it's probably got to be you know above 30 to 40 percent of your one rep max so it can't be super super light so there is a point where it is just too light so hopefully you enjoyed this if you want to see the whole podcast that's already up on the youtube channel school muscle episode one you can check it out on itunes and stitcher as well but i hope you enjoyed this drop a comment if you like how i kind of took out a portion of this if you'd like to see other portions of this podcast episode in their own like youtube videos like this i would be more than willing to do that for you but that's all i got for you i'll see you in that next one